a dual display action cam with a touchscreen, the much anticipated SJ6 Legend from SJ Cam. How does it perform? Let's find out. So, introduction. What is the SJ Cam Legend? Well, in a nutshell, it's an action camera that has two displays, the main display being a touchscreen. Aside that, there are the usual features that we expect from the camera of its category. Let us start with the unboxing. The Legend comes in the usual SJ Cam color themed box with the concealed sticker of authenticity. An important security measure to make sure that the product we are purchasing is legit and not a knockoff. Inside the box, the camera is accompanied with a whole range of mounting accessories and if more is needed, there are more available online. From the first impression, the accessories do appear to have been improved in finishing and quality. Included with the accessories are some new things that are useful in certain specific ways. For example, a frame that would allow the camera to be mounted in various ways but still allow full access to the camera. Next item is the back panel for the waterproof case that allows for touchscreen to be operated while keeping the case waterproof, though to a shallow depth. If you intend to dive deeper than 10 feet, use the hard panel instead. Now let's look at the camera itself. My very first impression is that the camera feels heavier. A quick check confirmed that too. It is just a few grams of weight gain and drone users need not be too worried. What we get in return is the build quality, which sure feels like it's the cream of the crop. Manufacturers that want to say their product is the best, this is the way to show that. The finishing is immaculate. The matte surface is slip resistant and feels soft to the touch. The battery compartment is metal reinforced and spring loaded. And finally, there is quarter inch mounting thread, which puts this camera in multiple categories, but more on that later. Before we jump in joy, let's hold that thought because the camera needs to be a winner in the performance department too, which we shall assess shortly. Around the camera we have at the front the lens and a LED display, slightly different from the usual LCD displays as this one generates its own light and is much more visible outdoors. To the right we have the power and settings button, on the left we have the mini USB port, micro HDMI port micro SD card slot, mic and speaker grill, and on top we have the action button. There are various indicator LEDs at different sides of the camera as well. Turning the camera on, we are greeted with the SJ Cam logo and we are ready to shoot. The screen shows enough information for us to know the settings at a glance. We can perform a lot of the camera's operation via the touchscreen. For example, we can slide from the top to toggle some of the wireless features, slide from the bottom to access the mode selection, and two icons at the bottom, left and right, are gallery and settings menu. Slide sideways to switch between video and still mode. The menu system. With advent of the touchscreen, the menu is easier to work with. There are a lot of menu items simply because there are a lot of features that SJ Cam cameras provides in general. Five minutes is all you'll need to explore all the options. From that point on, it's relatively simple to use. On a personal note, I would much rather have a long menu with lots of features than to not have those features for sake of simplification. My personal thought. Others may have a different view. Before we move on to the performance of the camera, let us touch upon the internal components. First thing is the Panasonic sensor. This sensor is very similar to that used in the old SJ5000 Plus. This is a move away from Sony sensors that SJ Cam used in the last two models. We will see the comparison when we look at performance of the camera. The chip that has been used is Novatec NTK96660. This I have to say that I'm a bit disappointed to see again. It has been used repeatedly in the last few models and in my opinion this is the one component that holds back the capabilities of the sensor, which otherwise with a different CPU could deliver better results. So finally, the performance of the camera. I will start with the Full HD at 60fps. This camera, like most of its predecessors, is at its best at this setting, with sufficient details and very fluid motion especially in fast moving scenes. 
From the get-go, we can see that there is a vibrant saturated image and by most part the image is free from noise, even in late evening settings. So overall profile of the video is quite commendable. k at 30 fps is the alternative to the full hd at 60 fps the bitrate is the same as that of full hd at 60 fps which is 30 mbps we have half the frame rate but almost double the amount of pixels it comes down to user's preference and scenario of use but 2k at 30 fps is perfectly good setting available from this camera for a scene like this where there are not too much motion this mode will help in getting more details in a bright day, most elements are represented well, like the blue sky and the green fields and my friend here has some parts under shadow but still clear enough. Quality of video does change on basis of changing environment. Clear morning, clear afternoon, overcast morning, overcast afternoon and apocalyptic rain. <laughs> just to mix things up. There are smaller resolutions as well, in case if someone needs to save on battery or space, it's there. Speaking of battery life, the 1050mAh battery in real world usage gave me over an hour and a half worth of usage, which includes a lot of screen time as well. Going on to the slow motion setting, there is a 240fps setting or 8x slow motion. Both generates the same result. Of course, sharpness cannot be expected from this resolution and quality of picture is fairly low. Things improve at 120fps setting which runs at 720p, still fairly low bitrate running at only 7.7 mbps but useful and good enough. The gyro is an important feature of the cam. With the new firmware, we get three settings off, low and high. Leaving it off gives us widest viewing angle but walking with it we get shaky video. In gyro setting low it improves quite a bit though the field of view is narrower. In high setting it cuts in a lot but the results are great. Even allows me to walk fast and have a shot that is not totally destroyed because of the motions and the vibrations. Going up from here, we would need a handheld gimbal or something similar. The field of view with different modes are as follows. Other modes include car mode, loop recording, time lapse or they call it video lapse, which I recommend you use with external power source. Interesting thing is that you can plug in your external power source while the camera is recording without interrupting the recording which can be life-saving at times but if you disconnect the power source while recording it will turn off the camera there are lots of other modes to select from as need arises the camera's app allows for settings to be altered rather easily the most recent version of the app updates the camera's firmware automatically which is great feature for most people quick note Updating the firmware resets the camera setting, so customizing it again may be necessary. The camera's onboard mic is handy, though it cannot record while the waterproof case is on. Here is a clip recorded with the onboard mic. Hello everyone, so this is the onboard mic test of the camera. Here I am next to a river, so there's a bit of background noise, and which is good. We shall um, hear what the background sounds like along with my voice and I'm also walking on gravel so that noise would be there as well. The camera's gyro is set to high to counter the movements generated by me walking. Um, I don't have any gimbal or anything like that to stabilize. Also there is some wind uh, that may also affect what is being recorded. So that was the microphone test. Um, back to the studio mic. SJ Cam also sent me this external mic which the SJ6 supports and the next segment I'll record using that mic. Okay, let's do some further commentary about the picture quality. I did mention that the sensor is similar to that used in SJ5000 Plus. In fact, they are extremely close to each other. Thus, the image profile is similar as well. With regards to similarities, to the M20, the Novotech chip 
gave the M20 and the SJ6 same numbers exactly. Same bit rate, same resolutions, same frame rates. In fact, apart from some very minor differences in color reproduction and image quality, the two cameras are identical in capabilities or should I say limits. SJ Cam also sent me a remote for the camera which is again sold separately. But it is so handy, especially underwater. It only needs to be paired once and from then on it just works. This one that you're looking at has some salt marks on it because it has been to the bottom of the ocean with me. Yeah, well a shallow bottom really. <laughs> okay, time for some pros and cons. Let's begin with the pros. The build quality is fantastic. Plenty of accessories to start us off out of the box. The gyro stabilization is excellent. Wireless capabilities as a whole is handy. External mic capabilities is a welcome addition. Tripod mount. This makes it more readily suitable for interviews or vlog setup. It's now more than merely an action camera but can be utilized in wider applications as well. The cons. Well, the battery shape is different again. If you have other SJ Cam cameras, it's not gonna work across. But if you don't, no worries. Mini USB is a step back in time rather than attempting to move forward to USB Type-C, let's say. All other previous models so far had micro USB connection which is more common but still all USB 2 connections are slow. Novatech chip. Because of this one thing I'm saying this camera is not much improved in terms of capabilities. Sure there is touchscreen and dual display and external mic capability but if these do not matter to you buy the M20 instead. The money you save spend it on ice cream. k can i express it any louder this is not a 4k camera i have been very critical of this subject for a very long time the resolution for the 4k mode is 2880 by 2160 which in reality is not 4k sg cam does mention that it is interpolated any image or video can be interpolated to any size but that does not add detail the bitrate for the 4K video is 23 Mbps, which is worse. They are doing this for no other reason than to mislead some people into buying this product. Some people will think it is 4K camera. SJ Cam went so far this time that they printed it clearly on the box that this is a 4K camera. SJ Cam has done so well with their products and services. This is why behavior like this annoys me a lot. Moving on. The camera itself has a lot of merits on its own. The pros outweighs the cons. Besides, if the negatives I mentioned in this video does not affect you much, this can be a good camera to have. As far as durability goes, all of my SJ Cam cameras that I have is still functional and I use them often. I have dropped them and one of them went into the swimming pool water and lives. I don't recommend you do that by the way. SG Cam is also proactive about security and has established a reputation for updating firmware of their camera regularly. They are facilitating communication between users and staff in different ways via their website or social media. Yes, I disagree with one aspect of their marketing with rather strong opinions, but that being said, for the price, it is still a very reasonable offering with good inclusions, features and build quality. If I am out and about, I will use this camera, no issues there. There isn't much wrong with this camera, rather most thing about the legend is good. Well that's the end of this review. While I close the video, enjoy some of the random shots I've taken using this camera. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Your suggestions and questions are most welcome and I'll do my best to reply to as many questions I get. As always, I welcome you to subscribe to my channel for more videos such as this one. I thank everyone who has helped me with my channel, including you. My viewer is my motivation. Hope to see you next time. Bye for now.